If you're looking for a great up-to-date guide for Yanfei as of patch 2.3, then you found it. Today we're going to be going over a bunch of different kinds of builds we could use for Yanfei and do a couple of showcases for those builds in the Spiral Abyss. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the first build. The first build is going to be a vaporized focused Yanfei and this is a very good build that focuses on dealing immense amounts of damage with vaporizing Yanfei's charge attack and E skill. Utilizing this playstyle will require you to level up Yanfei's talents, especially her normal attack, so that you can increase the damage of your charge attacks as much as possible. Afterwards, you'll probably want to prioritize your elemental burst and then your elemental skill. Now, when choosing an artifact set for a vaporized playstyle Yanfei, you actually have a lot of different kinds of options. We can go with a four piece Crimson Witch set, we can go with a four piece Wanderer's Troop set, we can go with a four piece Shiminawa set. And we can even go with a four-piece retracing bolide set. Let's start at the top, the four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames. This is going to be her best set, but it's not the best by a very huge margin. When compared to the other sets, it's actually very, very close. But this set is going to give you a really nice pyro damage bonus, as well as it's going to increase the damage of your vaporize elemental reactions. That's why this one ends up being the best, because if we can consistently cause vaporize reactions, this is the set that does really well. However, it should be noted that the four piece set bonus where you get an extra pyro damage bonus by using your E skill is a little bit hard to utilize on Yanfei since her E skill is a 10 second cooldown. So unless you are absolutely perfect with pressing your E skill, as soon as it's off of cooldown, you won't be getting any extra pyro damage bonus from the four piece set bonus. But even when you don't have that, this extra vaporized damage pushes it past the other options. Now in terms of main stats, you definitely want to run attack percentage here on the timepiece, and then you'll want to find a pyro damage goblet here. This can work as your off piece, and then over here on your hat, you'll definitely want some kind of crit. Either crit rate or crit damage in order to balance out your crit stats. And then of course, in terms of substats, you'll definitely want to try and get as much crit as you can. Invest a little bit into attack percentage, and then throw on a couple of elemental mastery if you can manage to get that. The next set is a four-piece Wanderer's Troop, and this is going to give us 80 elemental mastery in order to increase that damage on Vaporize. And then the four-piece set is going to give us 35% extra damage bonus on our charge attacks. Since Yanfei is very much focused on charge attacks, this four-piece set bonus is pretty nice. The main stat here stay pretty much exactly the same attack percentage and pyro damage bonus and crit in order to balance out your stats and in terms of damage percent the wanderer's troop is only about five percent less damage than a four piece crimson witch set so it's really not a huge difference at all the good thing about a four piece wanderer's troop as well is that you don't have to farm an artifact domain if you've been playing the game for a while and just been defeating bosses to level up your other characters you might have a pretty good reserve of wanderer's troop pieces that you can just take a look at and see if there's anything good there so of course depending on where you're at in the game you may or may not have a good stockpile of wanderer's troop artifact pieces we also have the option to run a retracing bolide set but since this artifact set doesn't really contain any desirable artifact pieces for many other characters the chances that you have a good amount of retracing bolide pieces is probably going to be very low so i would definitely not really recommend farming for this set as getting Wanderer's Troop pieces is going to be much easier from fighting bosses trying to level up your other characters. The Retracing Bolite set is very niche and it requires you to pretty much use a shielder and that shielder being Zhongli. So if you don't have Zhongli, then this artifact set is not going to give you the damage bonus here of 40% on your normal and charge attack damage. Yanfei at C4 does have a shield and Diona also has a shield. Toma also has a shield, but they just aren't reliable enough in order to give yourself 100% shield uptime so that you can always have this extra damage bonus. Our Tracing Bolite and Zhongli are basically just always recommended to be used together. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't farm for this artifact set, but it's definitely an option if you have the pieces. The next build is a Shiminawa set. And in terms of damage difference between the Crimson Witch, it's only about 5%. So still, this one is pretty dang good. Also, this four piece set effect has a 10 second cooldown. So the fact that Yanpei also has a 10 second cooldown E skill means that maintaining this four piece set bonus is going to be incredibly easy. Now, there are a few pros and cons with running a Shiminawa set. So we'll first just go ahead and start with the pros. And that's the 
fact that this domain is a really good domain to run because it gives you a lot of really good artifact pieces. The two piece set bonus here is a very solid two piece set bonus. It's the same as a gladiator, but it's actually farmable through an artifact domain. The four piece emblem of Sever Fate is also a really good artifact set for a lot of different characters. So you can kind of just kill two birds with one stone here. However, do note that this four piece set bonus means that you are losing energy and that means you are losing the potency of casting your elemental burst. So if you decide to run a four piece Shiminawa set, what you're doing essentially is that you are trading a weaker buff that is more consistent because all you have to do is pop your E skill in exchange for a stronger buff from her elemental burst that has a longer duration but is based on having enough energy and also has a very long cooldown of 20 seconds versus the 10 from Shiminawa. And so since you drain energy by using the Shiminawa 4 piece set bonus, casting your burst is going to be that much harder. So it depends on what you want. Do you want the stronger buff from this, which is a little bit hard to get because of the high energy cost, or do you want a slightly weaker buff that's really easy to get just by popping your E skill? Running a 4 piece Shiminawa also means that if you happen to have a C6 Yanfei, you're going to be losing some benefits from her constellations, mainly her C4 and her C6, because her burst gives her a shield, as well as a passive Scarlet Seal regeneration. So her burst becomes pretty valuable here because getting extra seals for more damage is really good and an extra shield is always just not bad. However, it is very hard to argue with the fact that this domain provides a lot of good artifact sets because the Emblem of Severed Fate is very universally applicable to a lot of different characters. And then of course, you don't have to run four piece set bonuses on a Vaporized Yanfei. Many different combinations of two piece set bonuses are still really good on her. And if you decide to go with that, the damage difference between those is less than 10%. So for example, a two-piece Crimson Witch of Flames and a two-piece Wanderer's Troop is a very good option if you don't want to farm for the full set, as well as a two-piece Crimson Witch with a two-piece Gladiator or a two-piece Shiminawa. Works pretty good as well, and you can also even go Wanderer's Troop with Gladiator's Finale or Shiminawa's Reminiscence. All are really good options, and when compared to the four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames, your damage difference is not huge. Now, in terms of weapons for a Vaporize, Yanfei, Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds R1 is a very strong option because of the nature of her elemental burst. It requires Yanfei to stay on the field, so that means you're going to get the passive bonus from this weapon very easily while your burst is up. Crit rate is also just an amazing substat, so this weapon is just an incredible choice for a Yanfei. Next would be a Wid Sith R5. This weapon is just absolutely bonkers. Crit damage substat here is amazing. So if you're gonna run this, you'll probably wanna run crit rate on your circlet because you have a bunch of crit damage here already. Yanfei can also easily take advantage of all three of these passive skills, whether it be the attack, the elemental damage bonus, or the elemental mastery. They all work very amazingly with a vaporized focused build. And when you R5 this, this weapon can actually overtake some five star weapons. Skyward Atlas is another choice for her, but not as great as some of her other options because the subset on this is only attack percentage, and we can easily get that in other places. We really want to focus on crit for our weapon subset because that's definitely going to give us the most mileage. But Skyward Atlas is still a pretty good option, so if that's the only weapon that you happen to have, then you can definitely throw it on Yanfei, and it will definitely be usable. Next would be the Black Cliff Agate. I don't have that weapon, but pretend that my Black Cliff Pole is the Catalyst version of it. Anyway, this is a good weapon only if you can maintain three stacks. However, maintaining three stacks is very unrealistic and very impractical. So what we really have to do is look at either one stack or zero stacks. And when we take that into consideration, the Black Cliff Agate is really just not that good. So although on paper, if you have three stacks with the Black Cliff Agate, it starts to compete pretty well with 5-star weapons. It's not actually going to happen when you actually play the game, so it's best if you don't spend your star glitter on it. We should also talk about the Memory of Dust. This weapon requires 100% shield uptime, so it is a strong option if you're going to be running this with a Zhongli on your team, but if you're not, then this weapon just gives too much attack percentage, which we don't really need. What we really want is more crit. And so once you add more buffs into the team, like Bennett for example, this weapon is going to start to fall behind some of our other options like like the Lost Prayer and the Wood Sith. 
So if Memory of Dust is your only option, then you can definitely use it. But remember that you also need to have a shield, preferably Zhongli, so that you can have 100% uptime on that shield. Now, if we take a look at our four star options, the Solar Pearl, Dodoko Tails, Mappa Mare, and they all perform very similarly to each other. Solar Pearl is locked behind a battle pass, but it gives a nice crit rate ascension passive. Dodoko Tales R5 is a completely free to play option that came with the Archipelago event. So if you happen to have this, this is also a very strong option. Blackcliff Agate, I already mentioned that. Definitely not worth your star glitter. And then of course we have Mappa Mare. So this is a completely free to play option. And if you miss the Dodoko Tales, Mappa Mare is pretty good. Yanfei is able to take full advantage of this passive skill and its substat with Elemental Mastery, especially for a Vaporize build. So pretty solid option, especially if you miss the Dodoko Tales. Now, if we had to order these four star options, it would go Solar Pearl, Dodoko Tales, Black Cliff Agate, and then Mappa Mare. But in terms of damage difference here, we're talking less than 5% between all of these weapons. So at the end of the day, it's not a huge difference which one you choose. Definitely go for the one that you have already invested into so that you can save your resources and use it for a different weapon or character. Now, I want to go back to this real quick because I did mention that attack percentage is the best on her Sans piece. But we can arguably use Elemental Mastery here as well if your substats on your other pieces are heavily skewed in terms of attack percentage or if you're using Bennett as well. Now in terms of team comp here for Yanfei and Vaporize, your obvious shell is going to be Yanfei and Xing Chu. Xing Chu is going to apply that Hydro Aura so that Yanfei can Vaporize it. And of course, Bennett is placed on this team to provide more energy for Yanfei as well as a significant attack bonus from his Elemental Burst and a 4-piece Noblesse of Life set. Now, of course, you don't have to run Bennett on this team because everyone is fighting for Bennett. So you can run something like a double Geo Shell, or you can run an animal character instead to try and shred that Pyro to give your Yanfei even more damage. Sucrose, Kazuha, Jean, they're all great choices. Kazuha provides really strong grouping with his E skill as well as damage bonus. Sucrose also provides a moderate amount of grouping as well as being able to give extra elemental mastery for stronger vaporize and of course a Thrilling Tales Dragon Slayer's buff giving a large attack percent buff. Jean can provide healing and her E skill just does a bunch of raw damage as well. So those are some examples to use on a vaporize Yanfei team. Next, we can run a Melt Enabler Yanfei team, and pretty much everything stays exactly the same. Instead, your team comp is going to change to enable Cryo characters to do the melting instead. Yanfei is actually able to provide a lot of pyro application onto enemies so you can consistently melt with other characters like Rosaria and Kaya, for example. So there's really no reason to go over artifacts and weapons again. Instead, just switch up your team so that you can reverse melt. Either with Kaya, Chong Yun, Rosaria, those are all great examples of characters that can reverse melt while off of the field. Yanfei's next build is an overload build, and as the name suggests, we're going to be running electro characters in the team, and we're going to be focusing on elemental mastery for Yanfei. So with this type of build, you actually don't need to level up her talents at all. Instead, you want to focus on getting as many levels as possible on your Yanfei to increase that overload damage. So first, starting with artifacts again, 4-piece Crimson Witch set will increase your overload damage by 40%, so this is definitely going to give a good amount of damage on your overload. And since the focus is on overload, this means that we want to build Elemental Mastery as the main stat on as many pieces as possible and get Elemental Mastery subsets on our Flower and on our Feather. The Thundering Fury set also gives you the same amount of damage bonus on your overload, but the two-piece set bonus is going to be largely useless on Yanfei, so there's no reason to farm for this just for an overload Yanfei. You should only use this if you have a Elemental Mastery set farmed already. The Wanderer's 2-piece set for 80 Elemental Mastery, and then for the 3 remaining pieces, you can pretty much run anything you want as long as it has Elemental Mastery main stats. For the Feather and Flower, you obviously just want to focus on pieces that have very high Elemental Mastery substats. And you can even use the 4-star Instructor set as long as it gives you as much Elemental Mastery as possible. If you're going to be using the Instructor set, then try to limit it to the Flower and the Feather so that you can minimize the loss in stats between a 5-star and a 4-star. A max level 4-star with Elemental Mastery main stat is going to give you a lot less Elemental Mastery than a 5-star. 139 for a 4-star versus 
187 for a 5 star. In terms of weapons, the Sacrificial Fragments is going to give you the most elemental mastery, so this is definitely your go-to choice if you're going to go for an Overload Yanfei. Everything else about this weapon is not particularly useful for an Overload Yanfei, it's really just this Elemental Mastery stat. Now the 3 star weapon, the Magic Guide, once max leveled, actually provides a pretty good Elemental Mastery main stat bonus, so this is a very good choice here actually. Since all we're doing is focusing on Elemental Mastery and our attack stat does not matter for transformative reactions like Overload. Thrilling Tales is a decent option as well. You will be sacrificing your overload damage, but instead you'll be buffing your teammates like either Beto or Fischl so that they can deal their damage and increase your overall team damage output. But this of course depends on how well invested your Electro characters are. Hakushin Ring is also a decent option that's pretty similar to the Thrilling Tales because this will give a damage bonus to your Electro characters. So for the same reasons as the Thrilling Tales, if your Electro characters are invested into, this can provide more team damage. Now for teammates here, we're going to be throwing in Bennett again because Bennett is just Bennett. And although he's not going to be increasing Yon Fei's damage, he will be increasing either your Beto or your Fischl's damage. So if your Beto or Fischl is well invested into, his attack bonus is going to increase the team's damage. Universally, animal characters again will provide that shred to increase the damage of your overload and will also provide grouping so that you can deal AoE damage to multiple enemies at once. You however need to be careful here because when running two Electro characters, it means that this team will be very lacking in heals. So this means that the final slot, if you are not confident in dodging, will probably want to be a healer like Sayu or Jean. Zhongli is a very solid choice here for an Overload Yanfei because he provides that 20% universal resistance shred and with a strong enough shield, you just don't need any heals. So... So Zhongli is just the perfect support for this team, arguably for any team for that matter. And of course you're going to need Electro characters so that Yanfei can actually proc the overload. And your choices here are Beto and Fischl. These are going to be your most reliable characters because they're going to apply the Electro onto the enemies so that Yanfei can be the one to trigger the overload reaction. Raiden in this case is not a good option because her elemental skill will apply the Electro after dealing damage. So if Yanfei does her pyro damage first, then Raiden Shogun is going to be the one that triggers the overload. So in this particular team comp, Raiden is actually not a good choice here. So definitely stick with Beto and Fischl for your Electro characters. These two characters will also battery each other, so you're pretty much going to have a very constant Electro uptime on your enemies. The last and final build that we can run for Yanfei, which you're probably not going to find in any of those older Yanfei videos, is a shield support Yanfei. This, however, does require you to have at least Constellation 4. So if you don't have this, then do not go with this build. As the name suggests, this build is to provide a shield that is actually pretty darn strong. This Constellation provides a shield that is 45% of Yanfei's max HP for 15 seconds. So if we build for HP, we can make this shield pretty darn thick. The problem, however, is that we will not be able to maintain 100% uptime on this because this only lasts 15 seconds and her elemental burst has a 20 second cooldown. So in order to trigger this shield, you have to use your elemental burst. So that means we're always going to have about five seconds of downtime on this shield. Nonetheless, it's a pretty strong shield and is very useful for pyro characters, especially Hu Tao that really likes a shield. So if you don't have a Zhang Li, Yan Fei can be the shielder for your Hu Tao. In fact, she might actually even be better than Toma, because Toma can sometimes steal your Vaporize procs if you're running a Vaporize Hu Tao. But Yanfei will not do that. So enough of that. In order to build this, we need to build as much HP as possible on our Yanfei. So this means building a two-piece Millis set, as well as a two-piece Emblem of Severed Faith. 
so that we can get a nice energy recharge bonus and a nice HP percentage bonus. As for the main stats on these artifacts, you'll definitely want to prioritize HP percentage to increase your HP to as much as possible. And for substats, definitely focus on HP and energy recharge so that you can have as much uptime on that shield as possible. For your weapon, you'll definitely want to go with Prototype Amber to further increase your HP and also give healing to the team. This weapon is also going to regenerate Yanfei's elemental burst energy, so this just helps with uptime on that shield. So this weapon is definitely the go-to choice for this type of build. Very straightforward build, but also a build that not a lot of people really thought about. Running HP% percent on every single artifact, we can get our HP to pretty ridiculous levels, so that shield is going to be pretty dang strong. This of course means that Yanfei's own damage is not going to be particularly high, but you know if you're running a shield with Hu Tao, most of your damage comes from your Hu Tao anyway. If you're going to be playing Vaporize Yanfei, you need to be conscious of what combo she needs to perform in order to correctly vaporize her charge attack. Her highest damaging combo is to do two normal attacks into one charge attack as long as the charge attack gets vaped every time. And so sometimes doing two normal attacks into one charge attack doesn't actually vape your charge attack every time. These are based on a couple of factors, one of them being whether or not you have a C6 Xing Chu and also range. Without C6 Xing Chu, you actually need to do three normal attacks into your charge attack to vaporize your charge attack every time. If you have a C6 Xing Chu, you can do two normal attacks into your charge attack. However, the caveat here is that if you are a little bit too far, then you're going to have to alternate between two normal attacks into a charge attack and three normal attacks into a charge attack. And then when it comes to your skills, you're also going to have to be conscious about the combos that you do. So even though your E and your burst skills give you max seals upon casting, you should not use your charge attack right after them. Instead, you need to do one normal attack so that you can reapply the hydro that you cleared by using your skill so that you can vaporize the following charge attack. Also, if you happen to have C6 Yan Fei doing two normal attacks into one charge attack while she has her burst up still gives you the max four seals. So, you know, that's still pretty good. You don't have to do three normal attacks to get that fourth seal, which would in turn take up some extra time. So a vaporized Yanfei can be pretty technical. The other builds, the overload and the reverse melt, you don't really need to worry about that. So you can kind of just go unga bunga with those builds. So keep this in mind if you decide to play a vaporized focused Yanfei. That's pretty nice! Yo, 
I need you to hit me. Yes, give me them particles. Oh! Alright, hit me. Look at her! She's surviving! I have Shing Chu damage reduction too. <laughs> Give me my shield. You need a lot of energy recharge for this. We tank that. I mean, that was a fire hit too, though, so... But it doesn't last forever, so... You know, we gotta be careful. But look, look at look at the uptime on that, right? It's pretty good. Like, my, my burst is always up. Alright, go ahead and hit me. 